So we have a new idea on the channel and this is to do with dual fans. So I've had a lot of people commenting, talking about putting back fans onto the bit axe and using a different power supply. The only way you can power it is with another power supply. And in this video, I've literally stumbled across these. So this is from the Nocta fan package that you see here. And these two cables are basically a connector for four pin. So it does give you the fan control. I believe at least and if you can get this to focus you can see that there's four pins in there i don't really see if it's focusing or not it's not really but you can kind of see that there's four pins in there and then there's three pins in this one i don't know what that middle pin does right there don't know if it's oh there you go it's focused there so you can see that that's missing right there anyway my thoughts on this was that it's a splitter that allows us to put four pin in there and then split it out into two fans that we have there and it just came in this and i completely forgot about that i had seen it but it might give us an option to put fans on the back basically we are going to have to find a mounting solution because this one is mounted onto the heat sink but we don't really know where to mount it on the back and we can't stick it through these holes because it's too far away but we have an option to split it so i don't know if we can actually do this necessarily because i don't know if it's going to supply the right amount of power to both fans to actually keep the temperature as well i don't know how it works on the temperature control if you have two fans plugged in through one of these i'm assuming that it's going to try and run the fans to an optimum temperature across both of them so you kind of have to have the fans close enough to the chip but we really want to flow it through the voltage regulator there and maybe on the back of the chip. So I'm thinking the fan goes basically, let's just put that there. We have a Nocta fan here, but the fan goes there and it pushes air up through this. And this is the back of the chip right there. So if we had it here, it would push air through the back of the chip and then through the copper heat sinks here to cool down the voltage regulator and the chip at the same time. Now, obviously I'm gonna try it out, but you guys can let me know in the comments if this is actually not possible. There might be some intricacies that we find out along the way that don't actually work with it, but I'm assuming because it's four pin, as you can see there, it does have fan control. We don't know how it's gonna react with fan control in terms of heating, but I'm assuming we can just plug these in and then get it hooked up again and we can kind of hold this in place. I'm going to be using this fan just because the Nocta fan only is this old one with three pins. So we won't have fan control on this one. So we're going to be using a standard one that we get and then we'll find a mounting solution for this. So let's get that hooked up and let's see what it looks like. And then we'll get it hooked up onto the rig and plugged in. So one thing I want to note before we do that is we are going to be plugging in the main fan into this four pin right here and the auxiliary fan into the three pin, if you can see that there. So main fan on the four pin and auxiliary fan on three pin, just to make sure that we have four pin to four pin. So let's get this hooked up now. So here is what it looks like. You have the fan plugged in there, as you can see, and then one of them is plugged into the first fan that we see here and the other one is plugged into this auxiliary second fan that we have here these are just the standard fans from when you just get a bit axe from any supplier and let's get it hooked up onto the rig and then we can actually benchmark it we are going to hold the fan at a certain level or different placements to see if we can get it to be the most cool or most efficient and also check out how much it is interfering in terms of the speeds of the fans on automatic fan control. So here is the moment of truth. Let's get the power supply from around here and let's bring it up into the power supply here. So we're looking for the first fan to turn on at least. That'd be good. Okay, so that one turns on and it looks like this one is also working as well. So that's perfect. Now we just need to bring it over to the computer and see how it's functioning and where to actually place it. There's not too much ideas for placement here, but let's actually just look on the computer first and see kind of what hash rates we're working with and the RPM or how it's actually functioning 
in terms of the RPM. So I'm thinking maybe we hold it just under like this and we find some sort of mounting solution to push air through on the bottom and that should hopefully get that backside cool as well. We're going to go over to the computer and we're going to do a bunch of testing first and then I'll let you know the results that we get. So after just logging on here, we can actually see we're running with a frequency of 700 megahertz at 1.12, 22 watts. So it's definitely pulling a bit more. The input voltage is not as high, which is kind of a problem. And I do believe that that's to do with the fan. But if we move the fan right now, you can see actually on the voltage regulator temperature, we've moved it right under the voltage regulator. You can kind of see that it keeps dropping rapidly there. So it's at 65 now. 64 and I believe it's gonna just drop down one more after this new one so 63 so definitely some power issues with the input voltage don't know what's going on there if you guys can let me know but you can see we can drop the voltage regulator temperature very quickly down to below the ASIC temperature so this might have actually worked for getting the voltage regulator temperature down and flowing some air over those heat sinks we just need to find like a mounting solution at this point on where to actually put it because we can't really have it at the bottom. We could attach it to the bit axe with some sort of wooden plank that would keep it in place so it would blow air underneath the chip. And we could do it for a lot of the other ones because we have three more of these connectors that we could use. So I've just moved it there and we have put it on the front side. It doesn't look like it's decreasing the chip temperature too much. So I'm blowing air through the heat sink now, not directly on it, instead of the voltage regulator temperature. It doesn't really look like, oh, it does actually. It is decreasing it a little bit. So it's at 57.1. Now it's at 55 now. Oh, well, now it's at 57.5. It's dropping down, but I can't really keep it still in place to drop it. No, it's not really working too well. So there's definitely some tinkering that we have to do with this, but overall, I think that it's a good start for the double fans. We're going to try and leave it on a benchmark for a little bit, and we'll come back in about 20 minutes and see if we can get this a little bit higher than the last benchmark. Our last benchmark that we did, if we look here, is at 1170, 775, and that gave us a average hash rate of 1616 so if you can get anything above that we're going to start it at this benchmark and i'm just going to hold the fan there and then we're going to go from there so hopefully we can cool down the voltage regulator temperature and push the hash rate to even an average of 1700 or 1800 so we're trying to basically beat 1616 so let's benchmark it and then i'm going to hold the fan there and then we'll show you the results of that now, so after trying to benchmark it, we actually turned it off because it was getting way too low of a voltage input. You can see on the benchmark results here, I think it's definitely to do with the fan because I haven't had that low voltage input recently at least. So you can see we started it right here at voltage 1170 and frequency 750. And I thought that kind of looks stable, but the input voltage is only 4.9. 2 1 which is kind of low i'd expect it to be a little bit higher than that and kind of hovering around five but it doesn't look like it wanted to stay there and then the temperature for the chip was still good and the vr temperature was way less on our video that we just shown then the vr temperature got up to 94 but even with that back fan you can cool it it makes me wonder maybe you're pulling two fans worth of voltage through it so that's why it's not giving you the full voltage or maybe we just have to upgrade and go with the power supply i've kind of been putting it off just because i didn't really want to go through all the hassle of learning it necessarily but it looks like we're going to have to unless we can find some sort of solution to this so any of you smarter people out there let me know if it's kind of crossed your mind to do this put on two fans through one of those nocta adapters that you can get the only reason that I tried it is because it just came with the fans and I thought that's interesting, might as well use it. We can definitely cool it way more. So that's a good plus. We know that if we have two fans running, 
we can definitely cool the VR temperatures way lower and the chip temperatures as well. And then we up this, so I was just thinking maybe it's the under voltage on this, so measured ASIC voltage, so I up that one, and you can see we got this result. This is, I only let it run once, an update, but you can see 1190 and 800 at 1530 giga hash. This was definitely not stable, but the input voltage kept dropping to 4.8, and I kind of cut the experiment off at that point because it's nearly getting to low voltage and not supply enough power through it. Temperature was 62 degrees and VR temperature was 73. I don't really know if that's too accurate. The results aren't really great. Um, but I'm going to upload this video and you guys can let me know kind of what you think about it in terms of putting the double fan on. If it's a terrible idea, please let me know straight away. We're not going to run it for now. We're just going to put on the single fan and then swap it back if we have an answer in the comments or maybe I'll find out in the meantime, but it definitely goes to show that we can get way more terahash out of it. So if we could get it stable at, you know, 1,800 or even at 1,900, two terahash even, I definitely think we can do it if we have an extra fan on the back because the heat only goes up to about 73. And that's a far long way off the 94 limit that I've set. The only limit that would kind of go over is probably the chip temperature, but we can direct the fan in a certain angle to hit the chip and also hit the voltage regulator, you know, something like a 30 degree angle. We'll try to figure out a mounting solution as well. If you guys let me know if this is safe in the comments, you just have to up the voltage or it might be the power supply, something like that. Let me know in the comments because I'm always looking in there for kind of feedback and things to do. Um, the power wasn't actually too much, it was only around 21 watts, uh, so this is frozen because we just unplugged it because I didn't want it to get too hot or too undervolted. But it also looked like the fan speed was working, it was just powering both of them at 7000 RPM and that kind of leads me to believe that the input voltage wasn't handling it very well, so maybe you just need one that's kind of fan controlled, but with the 4 pin it's all fan controlled, I'm not really sure to be honest with you. I don't know enough about electrical components to know if that was a good idea or not. But as I said, let me know in the comments what you guys kind of think about that idea of plugging it in through an adapter and the reason that we got the low voltage there. And also if you want to see that new power supply, I'm thinking of going with a means well, I think that's what they're called. And we're probably going to go for 200 watts just so we have some headroom to add some other things in kind of later on down the line, maybe a nerd axe, something like that. So let me know in the comments, make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.